Okay, good morning, traders, and welcome to this live intraday strategy webinar on SB Trade Desk. Today is Tuesday, October 13th. Uh, Mike Boutros with you on the horn. Hey, Jay, Joseph, March in. Good morning. Great to see you uh, all in the room. Um, hey, Pete, interesting setup we have going on here. I'm kind of in limbo, all right? I'm waiting for some clarity on some of these dollar crosses. Uh, nice little stretch there. Uh, dollar cat, I think, still has got a little deeper to go. In any event, we have a couple of things on tap, but on the menu for today, we'll hit DXY, Euro, Dollar Yen, Dollar CAD, Dollar Peso, SPX, Sterling, Gold, Kiwi, and Aussie, um, of which all basically have pending setups. Um, if you're on the swing side of things, you're still holding that short. Nothing's changed there on the Euro. Sterling, Aussie actually looks like a decent bump. The pullback we're looking at right now, um, you know, I think has maybe a little bit deeper to go, but. Um, as always, feel free to throw any questions or trade setups on the message board. Let's get through this. Here's what um, DXY looks like, um, or at least the last time that we reviewed it. Was back here on the 6th. So... The objective here is that is the break, and again, this is back on the 6th, is the break that we got below this key zone legit? Um, it was 93.60. We got follow through. That follow through failed right ahead of the 618, okay? And you're kind of stalled out. Here's what it looks like. It's still pretty clean, but efficacy, the, the momentum is stalled right out into the monthly open or the weekly open. So look, we're setting up a pretty tight weekly opening range just below the August highs. That's 93.30. The 618's 98.90, 98.89. Um, yeah, I still think you get the strike lower, but we're basically still looking for some sort of uh, reaction, some sort of inflection, in my humble opinion, off that mark. Remember DXY in the weekly, right? You're not coming up on anything major. The only thing I would, I would taunt with you here is the low week reversal close that's actually 9297 so just a hair okay above uh that 618 like here but you get the picture right one last strike maybe a, an exhaustion into the zone if we beat if we if there's weakness sub 9290 into the open into the close today um i think that would all but validate just the resumptive move Right, 92, 28, 2018 open. You got the September open, which is 92, 18. Both levels of interest on the downside. All things held constant. Still looking for some sort of inflection off a move into 92, 89 if you get it. That's DXY. Questions? Okay. Uh, that's number one. Number two, here's zero. as it stood back on the 11th. So right into the start of the week, um, we saw that resistance hold, okay? The pullback is still in play. Remember what I told you guys on the webinar yesterday? I assume all you guys make it to the Daily FX webinar. I know that there's literally hundreds of people in there, so it's way more, it's harder for me to pick you guys out to answer your questions specifically, but I try to get as much as I can. Um, the, the focus was whether this upslope kind of gives you failure and a pullback, um, early in the week. So you kind of got that. Here's where Euro is now, but there's not much, again, there's not much momentum behind it. Um, levels of interest I gave you guys was 1780 as it stood earlier in the week, as it pertains to that slope, it's a little bit lower at this point, 1770. Again, you have a former nice pivot zone, swing low, 1754. That's kind of near term bullish inval. But the question here is very similar to what we're looking at with DXY. Do we get the iron strike one more time to get that beautiful FIB confluence? I love these FIB confluences. I point them out every time I find them. 100 off the low, 618 off the high, 1853, 1859. Love it. Love it. And basically into the end of the week, right, you're looking at that converging on a whole bunch of slope. Downslope resistance on the on the daily chart, the pitchfork that we've been following. Current 
operative upslope or channel resistance is a parallel of the lows, extended off the highs, that caught the high on Friday, converges right here. So again, one of those trades where the momentum is dead, but you know, you're at really good, the levels are clear. If you get the strike into 1860, you look for a reaction, look for failure there. Anything above that straight up resumptive move for the broader uptrend, it's a pivotal, pivotal zone. Um, and on the downside, really, you need to kind of crack the monthly open. You know, you need to get below 17 handled, kind of get this thing, um, you know, back on the corrective stance. So a lot up here, not much momentum, grounded right in 50 on the intraday chart, 50 on the daily chart. This is a time where you got to be a little bit more cautious. And again, nimble is the game here. Did get the release of inflation numbers, by the way, guys. A little softer than expected. Core inflation coming in at 1.7% versus the expectation of 1.8. Year-on-year uh, -year flat inflation is 1.4 expected. Uh, you got pretty deter a bad read on uh, employment out of the UK earlier today. We'll look at sterling levels in a minute. All right, any questions here on Euro? I haven't gotten anything in. There's not really much to do just yet. All else, your uh, weekly opening range is just taking shape. So stand by. All right, number three. This is last night's update. Dollar yen. So um, really nice hold, okay, uh, at resistance. We highlighted this earlier uh, last week. You guys know how I feel about dollar yen, but when the levels are clean, man, the levels are clean. So the zone of interest was 105.88 to 106.09. We talked about it all throughout last week. It actually missed the first couple approaches, but into the close of the week, you just corkscrewed right into that thing, break lower, uptrend support, break. 105.46 was the first level we were looking for. 105.20 was the second. We didn't quite get it. So it brings into focus, again, the same setup we're talking about with the Euro and DXY. Do you get that last extension to tag an, an important technical barrier first? Or is it just, you know, that's all she wrote? So I'm still at a standstill here. If you were holding shorts, if you're not break even or better at this point, I would be. Um, definitely above uh, the weekly open, you kind of do not want to be trying to press the short still. but that's the level you got to be looking for. 105.20, 105.16. It's the same zone we've been talking about. Longer dated, 38.2, just the decline from the highs that you made in August. Uh, that's the short dated one. Then the longer dated one is the um, the March uh, rally. So both of those converge on slope, down slope for the pitchfork that we're in, the descending, and the ascending pitchfork right here. One, two, three. So big zone, a big zone. I was kind of hoping to see this grind into this zone tonight, last night rather, uh, to see a, a nice little reaction or at least inflection off this, right? But we didn't quite get it. So again, another one that's on the watch list. Here's dollar yen again on the daily charts just to work backwards on this one. There's that 618. It's caught many lows before. Has been accelerated break on both sides on the decline and on the ascent. There's upslope there. Look for a reaction here. I feel like for dollar yen, most a lot of times you, the daily chart's kind of all you need. I can get all granular, and obviously the slope that we're working with here on the downslope on the upslope is much more in the tighter time frame, so you can map out a little bit cleaner levels. But from an objective standpoint. Look at what this thing did, guys. This is the monthly open. You set a monthly low. You set a monthly high early in the month. Your monthly opening range is set. It's the 13th. Respect that break. Respect that break. All right. That is dollar yen. Questions on the abomination? Okay, so for dollar CAD, here's why thing here's where I think uh, things get a, a little interesting, a little more interesting, because you guys have probably noticed 
if you've been paying attention. We've been playing around with this slope for a while, uh, just using this access, this one reference point. Um, you know, this was the original slope. We saw the break and then the, and the pivot back below. So then we worked a little bit of a debtor slope, right, to include that one. But the slope that I've been sort of settled on still continues to be pretty fruitful, and it highlights major critical lateral levels that we're watching anyway. A quick look back, dollar CAD, because I think this is, again, one of those really interesting trades at this point. Here's where the weekly chart was. You simply made a 236 of the yearly range, turned lower. So if this was a true break of uptrend support, you know, it was a kind of messy retest, but it's there. And then we settled and closed last week below the 618 of that rally, all bearish developments. Unlike some of the other trades that we're looking at that are all grounded in RSI at 50, you're still kind of in a bearish tone here. So keeps the focus or the risk lower, although you kind of don't want to chase the low looking at the three-week decline of this magnitude. That said, here's the daily chart. So you kind of have a really nice outside or at least reversal. It wasn't outside day, but it was a pretty strong reversal day right there on the 7th. Clearly, finally saw a break of that 38.2. Kept the waterfall going. Here's the 618 break closed last week. Here's the first two days of this week, right? So what does this tell you? I don't really see anything major here as support, Mike. Well, on the daily chart, I would agree. There isn't really major or something I would I would designate as major uh, support until 3056. It's the 618. Longer dated 618 of the entire advance off the lows you made in 2017. Obviously, multiple monthly range lows in that zone. Um, last month's open comes in just below that near 3045. So it's a big zone, sure. On the near term front, here's what we've been looking at. Here's where that slope actually starts to make some more sense of why you're seeing the, the downside sort of wane here. So again, that pitchfork, if we just stick to the originalist format here, looks pretty decent on the median line break. Here's the 25% parallel. Here's the lower parallel support, 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 25% resistance. On the downside, you have 30, 50, uh, 30, 85. That's the 786 retracement of the advance off the September low. And then a little bit deeper in the week, there's that 3056 level. There's the September open at 3046. This also ends up being a 1618 extension of the decline, so another Fibonacci consideration into 3052. So beautiful zone. It converges on slope, you know, basically later into the close of the week. Um, not even close of the week, basically it's like a Thursday, Friday type deal, but I'd love to see a reaction off that mark. Now, again, that's wishful thinking. It looks nice. It's pretty. It comes in on slope, right? Um, you know, all, all, all rainbow and, and balloons and stuff. But here's the, the bottom line. Uh, the end of the day, you're still bearish below 3156, 3161. The accelerated break, former swing lows, 618 and 100 off the high. My money pivots. Money pivots, I call them. So, Below that, I still think you, you make the risk towards 3050. Now, 3206 is what I had as bearish inval, and that's just a really nice pivot in price. It would converge on the upper parallel. Again, on the decline, you kind of got an acceleration once you pass that uh, break as well. So I'll keep that as my near-term bearish inval, but ideally, any advances get capped here if you're going to strike 3056, if you're going to strike 3056. And that's where I want to see a way more... Um, you know, stronger technical reaction, inflection in price. Make sense? Stalking dollar CAD. Stalking dollar CAD. All right. Uh, next up, that is number four. Let's hit uh, Peso was also on this update. And here is what, so dollar CAD, no change to any of these levels, guys. We're right on. Uh, here's what Peso looks like. I think this is a very interesting setup as well. Um, 
I mean, if the dollar is going to find any kind of solace, I think this is one of the ones where you'd want to see a little bit more of a recovery. So here's where we are now. Here's where we were last night. Um, again, the zone that we've been talking about is 21, 2316 to 2940, this zone here, uh, both on the way up and on the way down. So you're starting the week, and that's essentially your weekly opening range highs, save the fact that you have that median line just higher. Look what happened overnight. You kind of got choked up here. Even the intra candle spikes failed at the median line, and your weekly range is basically just continuing to straddle this critical zone. Look for the break. Look for the break. Um, I have bearish in Val, or I've had it at 2154.88. Honestly, um, I guess that's still a kind of a safe zone to leave it. Uh, but the whole point is, if you get the resumptive move lower from here, it's a long way down. So you've made a pretty radical stretch. Okay. Um, oops, excuse me. Was that like seven, almost 7%, 7 percent, 7.5%. Um, back into a major pivot zone that we've been tracking um, into slope, right? There's a lot here. Guys, wait for the coil to break. Again, one of the momentum profiles here where it's completely flatlined, 50, 42, okay, slightly bearish. We're in a bearish trend, so I'm not surprised to see that. Advances should be capped by 2154.88 if it's still moving lower. Downside targets unchanged. Oops, anyone trading peso here? Again, this seems to be a super popular retail trader um, pair. I guess it's because of the explosion of volatility we saw this year, but it's a quick look at peso. Can we cover oil? Hey, Mike. Yeah, Rohan, I got gotcha. you. Let's uh, take a look at crude into the close. Sure. Again, so no change to any of those levels. Uh, next, SPX, we are at resistance, we are at resistance, Houston, do you copy, we are at resistance, um, it's an 88x retracement, it's nothing major, but there's slope there, timing was nice, um, and we're kind of seeing an initial reaction, 35, 45 was the level that I gave you guys a couple, uh, I guess last week, it's the same levels that we've been tracking here. Um, and the upper parallel is just higher. Now, for argument's sake, if you were to get, again, super liberal with the slope, right, to match it so that you get a tag down here, it actually looks like a perfect tag here. But let's stay purists on this for now. Um, and it continues to highlight near-term support right at 35, 34.99, 34.95 to be exact, the September open, the 764 retracement. Um, with bullish inval, I told you guys last night, unchanged, 34.44. So a breach higher from here, it's going to be the two, uh, the 2618 uh, extension that we didn't clip back in September. Converges up on the other per parallel. This is the last ditch effort. There's really nothing beyond that. Even the close high, well, let me actually put that on there. On the intraday chart here. So this is your close high. Levels on the upside, 3580, 3579,3602. Near term support, got to find support into 35. If the immediate thrust has more, that's your level. So pretty clean, guys. Um, no change to any of those SPX levels. <clears throat> All right, that's everything from last night's update, number six, number seven, the previous night's sterling. So like I said, you got some pretty bad sterling uh, employment data. What was it, like a contraction or a loss of... Um, 150,000 or something, but here's where the trade looks. Look, it peaked above that that pivot zone that we were looking at, specifically um, 29.80 into 30 handle, right here. 
Uh, and now it's setting up the weekly opening range right above that. So again, it's one of those trades where I am inherently looking for that spike. Ideally, same trade as all the other ones, 100 off the low, 618 off the high would be beautiful. Excuse me, into like 3170s. You know, even on a cons conservative, you don't make it all the way up there, like 3155, but maybe too ideal of a scenario. You know what I mean? Um, so let me just take a step back. Here, here's what Sterling looks like on the whole, right? It's just a very simple bounce building divergence onto a major, major support pivot. We talked about that. We got an outside reversal off that 38.2 and it did shift my focus lower. I thought we were gonna go right for the next, you know, stab into another low, at least make some sort of right, you know, right shoulder or something and all the, you get to all the inverse head and shoulders plays that you can you can envision, but didn't last too long, right? That decline was one day, here's the thrust higher. So do we get, I'm having problems believing that's just gonna, you know, fail at the 50 and then just drop lower. It could very well be the play, it's sterling, it's notoriously, professionally traded market but from a technical standpoint it'd be much cleaner for me to envision even an intraday spike into the upper parallel or at least into a new high then look for the break below 2980 uh, to open up sort of a larger pullback questions on British pound At the end of the day, as objective as you can, respect the weekly opening range on this one. And that is number seven. Also from that update was uh, number eight. Here's gold. So this thing is just waiting to rip people up, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> so here's the whole onset of gold, right? Let's talk about this from the top down. There's really, this one's, it's make or break here. It is make or break. Uh, wrote a report for um, Daily FX last week, and I told you guys about this on Thursday, 1932. What's 1932? It's the reversal day close. Post high, record high, that next week was a massive reversal candle. Really, really, you know, dramatic drop, but the close settled at 1932. For the next five six seven weeks we respected that level on a closed basis before finally breaking lower into support look what i told you guys on thursday to look for the close of the week 1932 we closed right below like literally right below all right, so what does that mean? Does it mean that we are on a straight bearish course again? Well, not necessarily, but certainly the pullback from there is well warranted. You're still, you know, precarious above that shaded region of where we had the former close highs and the former record highs. So yeah, I'm still looking at like support into this zone, bottom end of the zone basically is like uh, the 19 handle. But that's the weekly chart, right? Really telling guys, really telling. Daily chart look like this. All right, basic slope support or basic channel support, whatever you want to call it, off the highs. This is the parallel, one touch, perfect catch of the lows. Here's that level, 38.2 of the whole decline was 1935. The intraday high yesterday was 1933. So you try to find as much evidence to load up the significance of the region, not by, you know, getting all subjective and kind of trying to draw and amend the levels to, to mold your analysis to what you want to say. It's very objective stuff. It's the 38 to that near term drop. The 100 off the low. Again, not my not my opinion. Fact. It would be two equal legs would take you up as 1945, which is why even on the intraday, if you were to spike into 1945 but fail again ahead of that 1932 on a closed basis, you're still looking all right. So look, we haven't gotten the validation. One thing I would note that um, on its face value, you might interpret this move on the 9th as a breach of the monthly opening range highs. If we close back below that today, we'll refute that. And the monthly range highs basically extends to the ones we just made. So what does the intraday chart looks like? Well, 
looks like this. Rohan says, are you in the gold? Personally, no, I'm not in the gold trade. I'm, I mean, longer term, I'm always in a, in a gold trade of some sort, <laughs> but no, uh, on this move here, no. Uh, if the trade was the short, I just didn't have the foresight to take it. It was 1935. You saw the open there. You kind of multiple failures. Even on this recovery right here, a stop against the high, I think would have been a pretty decent position, but that ship sailed. Look to see what kind of reaction we get on a move lower. I haven't tacked on the retracement because we haven't gotten confer confirmation or conviction of a near-term high. If this materializes with a break of that swing low and we do actually sort of drill lower, um, tack on a quick retracement. And you'll note that the 50 converges on that level of confluence that we were looking at anyway, sort of just below the 19 handle. The 618. Well, that's even better, right on that same exact zone that we've been looking, 1880, um, 1882. So I don't want to keep this on here because I don't want to messy, you know, murk up the chart more than it is right now. So we're just going to focus on sort of these levels. But note that that same confluence zone, that's the 618 of this advance. So not full on crazy bearish gold, but certainly on the near term, guys, we are coming off of downslope resistance. So the dollar, if the dollar is able to find any somewhat footing here, uh, a pop in the dollar should at least give this thing a little bit more of an ease pullback. Questions on gold? Levels are clean. Levels are clean. Okay, number nine, New Zealand dollar. Here is Kiwi. And what the heck are we to do with Kiwi? So I've kind of like shelved Kiwi and um, Aussie in the meantime, or in the short front, just because here was our last update on the 8th. So really nice breakdown last week. Uh, the levels that we were looking at all hit into the 618. We even gave a warning here again on Thursday that, you know, you have to be careful. It's made a pretty nice stretch. Look for resistance here, if not the weekly open for bullish inval, for bearish inval. That's where it needs to hold if you're moving lower. Well, look what happened. That rebound actually was a good thing that we kind of like paused there because it did move higher, broke through the 618, broke through the weekly open on Friday with a surge taking it outside of the slope. What to do now? Well, um, I'm going to leave this. Let me take a step back. I'm going to get rid of this pitchfork at this point just to kind of clean things up. But that 618 still been a major pivot in price. It represents the lows that you made back in the September opening range. So I do want to keep that in view at 66. Uh, just for the record, the weekly open from last week, not necessarily a player this week, but it's still there. We're finding support there now. Um, and I kind of want to see what the opening range does here. It's one of those trades where, again, if you were to get the final extended push, man, it's a really nice 618 right up here at 6688, right? Be a nice exhaustion point. Um, nice pivot in price, former swing highs, former swing lows. It's loaded. So it would be a nice exhaustion point there. I'd be a little bit more comfortable trying to play the pullback. You can also envision a, a, a wave count. It looks like one, two, three. So was it a truncated four for a last five wave before a larger correction? Uh, I don't know. I'm still waiting on this one. Really clean, tight, weekly opening range coiled up. If you do get the pop higher, watch 66.88, 66.90. That's going to be a, I want to see a reaction there. And same thing with Aussie. Aussie is a similar scenario where, you know, a little bit cleaner in that the advance turned from a better level, right? This is basic slope resistance off the highs from September. But again, you haven't really broken upslope support. So I kind of get a little coy, right? I'm not really wanting to get an aggressive stance on this until we clear. But again, 38.2 matches up on slope at 71.52. It's a longer dated 618.
That's what I'd be looking at. So on whole, 7150 break would kind of open up the, 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 the little bit more of a of a conviction corrective stance in Aussie. Remember, I'm sorry, guys, I've been out of order today, but just because I've been so ing in ingrained in near term price action, trying to look for uh, entries here the last couple of hours. Uh, here's the daily chart, right? So where we're coming off of isn't all that surprising. Um, it's just that we need some follow through on the momentum, right? Here's downslope resistance, just showed you that on the intraday chart, but here's also upslope support turned resistance. Now, again, we closed above that on Friday, but not since, not since the pullback again, finding support, the monthly open 7160 It's where we are now. Let's look for a, a range break here. And also, let me just check something out real quick. Ew. Okay, so if it were to be corrective, the 100 still takes you into 73, which would be outside the realm of that downslope, which would be a straight breakout, which would be a breakout of the weekly opening range. So it's a tricky one. It's a tricky one. It's why I have Aussie and Kiwi on the sidelines. Immediate focus is on to get 7150 break or not. On this pullback here, do we find or ground an exhaustion low there or not? If it does, you know where to look on the upside. But all things held constant, like it's tough to, to, to get new positioning from this level in Aussie, in my humble opinion. You're kind of chasing here. All right. That is Aussie and Kiwi, 9 and 10. And that's everything on my list. Let me jump into your questions here. Crude, not sure what's going on there. March and I got your list here. So here's the crude pitchfork that we added a few weeks ago. Still looks like it's in play. Really nice move off the, you know, the upper parallel basically last week. Um, So here's your monthly opening range, and you are flat on the month. This is basically the monthly open, 39.83, we're at 39.96. Um, man, I mean, I'd have to say I'm looking for a, a you know a deeper pullback from here. I do think that the low you registered back all of these lows, a series of higher lows, does suggest it's a little more of a coil into resistance. But on the back of this thrust, on the back of the fact that you're coming off of downslope resistance, really nice catch of downslope support, right? I think you look for a little bit of a, of a deeper drill before resumption. Now, trying to identify those levels is kind of what you'd want to focus on on this initial move. So if we just take into account the October range, whoops, you'll notice that we already made a 50 of that advance. And you don't wanna to get too granular with this, but just for your sake, Rohan, that's what I'd be looking at. Now, honestly, anything closed above 40.83 is basically like, in my opinion, breakout. You're looking for 42. If you if you close above that 6.18, which you did on Thursday of last week, I think. But at this point, where slope is, it degrades it even more, right? So that's your, your sort of ideal resistance hold. Let's call it the weekly open. Well, let's not call it the weekly open. It is the weekly open. Whoops. Still major support. 
secondary target. I'd be looking for a larger reaction there if you get it. So failure below, Rohan, what you talking about? 4130. Yeah, I mean, again, if you get through the weekly open and you get through 4080, I wouldn't even try failing 4130. If you, because again, I mean, that's that, that's where you put your faith in, in, in your slope, right? If it spikes, yeah, Rohan, you always assess a spike on its own, right? If a spike happens, doesn't matter what the level is, if it spikes, and we get a 30 minute or, or hourly candle with a huge spike through resistance that pull back, I'll trade that all day long. So I, I agree with you on a spike, but if ands, you know, we wanna trade, we wanna have a plan and trade that plan. And right now that plan calls for failure in this zone. You know, all things held constant, anything above 40, 80, I don't even wanna really mess with. As, try, as, as far as trying to fade, does that make sense? And on the downside, 30, uh, 38, 46, really a big zone too. You have a lot of former swing lows, former swing highs, pivot break and acceleration, former swing low, 618 and downslope support. All right, Rohan says, yes, makes sense, right on. Cool, cool. Okay, uh, let me get through Marchin's list here. First up on tap for Marchin, uh, Aussie Kiwi. It's number 11, Aussie Kiwi, number 12, Aussie Kiwi. At support, at support, at support. Marchin, do you copy? We are at support. <laughs> Basically, not only is it a longer dated 618 extension, 618 retracement from the longer advance, but the advance itself, 618, is 107.85. Uh, uh, I love it. <laughs> Marchin says, Roger that. Copy. Um, so even if it were to extend into 70, into 107.85, I'd be very cautious. Uh, the ideal scenario, Marchin, again, sort of, you know, Goldilocks scenario, you, you get one more spike low to, to trigger the 107.85, and then that would be a nice divergent move, which may be a lower uh, a higher low in the oscillator gives you a little more conviction to try to fade against that low. But at the end of the day, you want to look for a reaction here. Anything sub 107.85 on a closed basis, I'd be looking for uh, a resumptive move. Not only that, but the the symmetry of this trade I love because the essential basic channel resistance, one touch, two touch, three touch, four touch, five touch, break acceleration, well, it's the first test of that slope is support. Nice area to find some. Um, some hold here now i say that but the aussie and kiwi uh, independent setups versus the dollar i'm not all that you know i really don't have strong conviction on margin so that's kind of what would throw me off but looking at this shotgun like first thing that came to mind i, I didn't even draw that this morning this is obviously something we've been looking at so um yeah watch support there all right what was the other one um uh, cad kiwi I mean, I think you'd mean Kiwi Cat, right? Okay, love the divergence into the low, okay? And this is a lowered floor uh, scenario. Remember, a, a raised ceiling, lowered floor, just a stretch on divergence right ahead of the slope before the actual exhaustion turn. Really very, very telling on exhaustive trades, which is exactly what this is. So is that the extent of it? I would think you'd go for another tag of the median line still. Again, my humble opinion, just by looking at this real quick. Why can't I grab this thing? Thirty-eight two is still at eighty-seven seventy. Uh, bear with me. This has no meaning yet. I just want to see what comes up. Ah, there it is. So that's kind of your critical zone. That's kind of your critical zone right here. Uh, 
Um, it's not the exact one six one eight hundred extension that we always work with, but this has been a major pivot in price. This longer dated six one eight, huge. So on the upside, that's where I would see the recovery, um, or that's where I think the major the recovery would kind of face its first sort of major threat uh, margin uh, or a tell. So it's basically at the eighty eight handle, just eighty seven ninety seven, eighty seven ninety five. Yeah, man, you have the December high, you have the monthly open just higher uh, into the 88 handle. I mean, that would be, for me, a decent recovery, I think, off that level. But at the end of the day, we can't ignore the objective yearly open, 87.36. Like, we haven't, despite all the range we've done here, at the end of the day, this thing hasn't done anything. We're right here at the yearly open. So, not something I think is worth tracking. Um, margin and all things held constant. If we weren't trading at such critical levels, I would think you'd look for the larger extension and then a, a more of a clear play on what happens here. Um, but for me, this is a low tolerance move. All things held constant. You just came into the weekly open, and posted an outside reversal candle. To me, that would have me looking lower right now. <laughs> so I don't, uh, not my cup of tea right now. But I hope that offers some clarity. Uh, and Euro Swiss is your last request here. Euro Swiss. Yeah, it's testing the bottom end of the range, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't pre, I wouldn't front play this. You know what I mean? Oof. What a hideous trade. Every slope just nasty breaks. Okay, so this is the daily Euro Swiss. Liberal and conservative, okay? This is a three-point touch. One, it dismiss that. Two, three, right? So it kind of coils it even tighter. I, would, I honestly wouldn't do anything until we get out of this just because it's such a tight range and it's just not my, my play per se. If you feel compelled looking for support, this is where you would look for an exhaustion point unless you think that Swissy is just going to rip, which, by the way, we didn't get – too much into detail on Swissy today, but man, that thing's that major support, major support, 90, 90, 90, 80. We talked about this level for months. It was the onset, and we finally got the break back above, was the onset of this nice rally. We're there again, okay? That's dollar strength. That's Swissy weakness. So for your Swissy move here, um, you know, something to keep, to keep to account on this Euro Swiss. That would be basically calling for a little bit of a bounce here. Does that help, Marchin? Tricky pairs, man. Uh, I like that you're tracking them. I specifically more so like the Aussie Kiwi one, um, but definitely something I think we should be tracking. But be, be nimble if you're going to take entries on these. He says, oh, thank you. Hey, more than welcome, sir. Guys, we'll wrap it up there if there are no other questions. Um, Best of luck trading. Be careful as we get into the next couple of days. There's nothing on tap basically from an event risk tomorrow, but as you get later into the close of the week, uh, some things come back on tap. So we'll cover those on Thursday, and I will see you then. Best of luck trading, guys. Cheers.